Hello and welcome to What's Bubbling a Zimbi. I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling, we're going to take you through some of the new things that are happening in Zim 10.8.0, which has just launched. Uh, we're at the Zim site now at zimjs.com, and you can see that we've got a prizeria happening here on the front where you can enter your Zim Zap and win $202. That's going to go on for the next 10 months, one prize per month for a total of 2020. Woohoo! So, uh, right now we're going to click on the Zim 10 up here. That's a shortcut into what's new in Zim 10, and there's the wrapper. So we press on the wrapper, and what the wrapper is, is these are all objects. They could be anything. They could be interface objects, text. Uh, uh, right now they're a bunch of circles. And as we squeeze the circle, you can see that those things wrap. And once they wrap past uh, the bottom there, we get a scroll bar that, that happens. Now, what we've got going on here is a wrapper, a new wrapper, that's been put inside of a window, and the window has been put inside of the layout class. And we can change the format of the wrapping. Let's uh, open this up a bit, and we click on this, and what happens is they all space away from each other, including spaces around the edge, where this one spaces away from each other, but they go right to the edges. Here we have columns, and uh, in these columns we've got alignment on the left. Can you see that? Alignment is happening on the left. We can also do align inner in the center, and now they're aligned in the inner in the center and aligned on the right. There's also alignment of the overall um, rows, so now we'll align them in the center, and now the um, overall rows, row, rows align in the center. Now the column is, uh, let's see, aligned right at the moment. So you see how it's at the right? We want that to be center, I guess, and this to be center. And there we go. Everything is center. Right down the middle. There, you see that? And you can also do the top alignment. So these are the top uh, vertical alignments of the whole rows, which won't be in effect until you set a height on this. But these are the top alignment of the inner ones. So we want that to be at the top. And now each of these line at the top. If we want them in the middle or center works as well, then they're aligned in the middle. So that's roughly alignment. We're going to go out of that and we're going to look at, this is back to the wrap mode here. We've still got our alignment applied though. So let's um, align these on the left. Let's squeeze that so we don't have one left. <laughs> um, but anyway, what these are doing is if, if we do it this way, it starts from the left-hand side. So it's flipping each of the, the, the rows here. So this says wrapper going this way. But if we go this way, or no, it says wrapper going this way. So all these rows are going along here. Whereas these ones, they're all coming along there. And you can actually use the Zim V values, the Zim picks to alternate, for instance, make the first row go from left to right, make the second row go from right to left, etc. What this one does is it uh, reverses completely. So now there's uh, all of the items are starting at the bottom and coming up. What this one does is puts loads it at the bottom first. So it's starting at the top, wrapper, but note that the top now has the, the sort of the unequal number as it wraps, and the bottom is full. This adds a void in, in the horizontal, so as you come across here, there's a void now. And here's the void in the vertical. So you can set how big the void is and how, how much the offset of the void is as well. All right, well, that's the wrapper. We should go in and take a peek at some code. We've also been using, I don't know if you noticed, but as this slides along, this is called a selector, and it is also new to Zim 10.8. And the neat thing about it is that selector, you pass in a tile. So that selector will work on any tile. For instance, if, if this were a tile that was passed in, then we could select ones here, and the selector would go bzzzt, bzzzt, and move over. Sort of like if you're trying to type something out on the television. <laughs> Isn't that annoying with your remote control? <laughs> and you're trying to select all the letters on the keyboard? <laughs> yeah, so anyway, we can do that now. We pass a tile into a selector, and, uh, and that's done. 
also we were playing around before we leave here. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed the lovely colors that we've got. <laughs> it's a bit garish. It's like something out of The Mask by uh, Tim Carey. Is that <laughs> No, Jim Carey, that's it. Tim Curry, Jim Carey, whatever. Kind of the same. Um, but anyway, uh, Jim Carey mask where he was wearing purple outfits but uh, what we've done is we've applied uh, two methods one called darken and one called lighten that allow you to darken or lighten any color by uh, a ratio so darken 0.5 will hit it 0.5 towards black and oh does it ever make this easy I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure I totally, totally uh, um, live by the results here, but uh, yeah, it made doing this kind of stuff easy. Instead of using transparencies, which sometimes can create an issue. For instance, if we put a transparency on this and then had a different background color, it, it would start changing. Now we're just saying make this a purple that's uh, slightly darker, make this a purple that's very darker, make this a purple that's lighter, and, and you're getting an effect like that. Okay, well, I was saying that we should go into some code and take a look. Uh, the wrapper code itself here might not be the best code to look at. It's kind of complicated, but why don't we go over it quickly? Why not, huh? It's not an explorer, so we won't spend too long on it. But there's that purple.lighten. As a matter of fact, I think right up here we see the purple.darken right there. Um, okay, so we're applying some styles. What are these styles for? These are for the selector. There's a new selector, and we're passing in a tile that is a series of label left, label center, and label right. So that's a series so that it does the tile in those orders. And then we pass that tile into the selector. When it changes, we find out the e.current target, which is the selectors current items dot text and that gives us these letters and we're pulling uh, the information from there in a sense anyway don't worry about it if you don't get that now what we've got up top is a tile so this is selector is actually inside of a tile so we've got a tile that has a series of this selector for alignment this selector for v alignment this icon right here uh, note we're darkening various backgrounds and stuff on that this uh, a selector for the inner alignment and this selector for the uh, V align inner. All right, so that whole thing is the tile sitting up at the top. Then we're changing the style to handle some of the labels on that. We uh, isn't that cool? Look, look, look at this thing. We've got a text of label, so we're changing the style of the label to have the following text. So that sets this series for every label that's made. It'll do this one, then this one, then this one, then this one, etc., and keep on going. We're only making four labels here. So we started off with all the stuff on the label, but there's a lot of things in common, so we're pulling that out. However, some things aren't in common, such as these things and their uh, who, which one they're aligning with. So we're locating this series of labels at the um, top dot get child is zero. That's the selector on the left. This next selector over, we're skipping the uh, we're skipping the icon, and then going to the next selector and the next selector. So these are accessing our selectors from above, and locating our text at those positions. We're also moving each one up and setting alphas and you know various things like that. So in the end, we just make four empty labels, and they're all being added and positioned with a style. We've got a few rectangles that are being put into the background there. We have uh, now the middle region. So what we're working our way towards is three regions inside of a layout class. So the first region is the top region there. And that's when we're, or why we're seeing if we squeeze this like so, we get these regions that are scaling various things in various ways. And uh, this, is, this is a vertical. Um, vertical regions. There's the first region. Here the selector is this, uh, the wrapper is the second region and then the icons, the selector icons down at the bottom is the third region. So that's a vertical layout. We could have been responsive and gone to, if it's squeezed one way, we could have put the logo on the left then run the wrapper and, and these things vertically on the right, that kind of thing if we wanted to. So the middle region is indeed a window 
and we've got uh, a scroll drag bar. Oh, yeah, okay, we've set it up so that the drag bar scrolls. By default, the window is actually set up to be more of a mobile window where you just swipe on the window. I don't know if you notice that, but you just pick up the window and swipe. And so then this, the um, scroll bar just kind of comes momentarily to show where you are and then goes away. But we have set it up to be a, a draggable scroll bar. By default, that's turned off. You need to turn that on. Um, then we're making a wrapper. So <laughs> here's what we came to see. Ooh, it's the wrapper. There, there we go. We've made a wrapper. We've passed in some spacing. Um, we can, if we want, pass in the objects right into the wrapper as the, well, it's the first parameter, or we could say uh, whatever it is, objects or uh, list. I think it's items. That's it. Items and then pass in an array of things. But what we've done is we've set up our objects and we're going to loop through the letters of the wrapper. Okay, fine. What else are we doing? Oh, yeah twice. So it says wrapper. We've split that and we're looping seven times that. So we have like I don't know, 49, I think this is 749 of these circles in there. So basically we're putting all those circles into array and then we're adding those to the wrapper. Uh, when we initially made the wrapper, we were building this out as, as we made it. We did not have a way to pass in the objects to the wrapper directly. We would just, like the window, the window doesn't have that either. The window, you make the window and then you add things to it later. We made the wrapper and then you add things to it later. In the end, we decided that, well, well why don't we make the first parameter the actual items? So we could pass in the items right into the wrapper here. But anyway, whatever. Um, once we've got the, the wrapper made there, uh, we are going to add it. Uh, we add the objects, but we add it to the window. So there's the window adding the wrapper, and we're centering that on the stage. So this is the stuff for the middle region. Note that for the layout class, everything needs to be on the stage. It's kind of neat. It's like, remember divs? You, you would throw a bunch of divs on there with no style. They just kind of like stack up. Well, the same thing here. We just throw things on the canvas, and then later we use the layout to uh, place them. And that's what we're doing here. We've added this other stuff to the canvas. The top has been added to the canvas. There it is, just add to. We don't really care where it is. As a matter of fact, we don't need to center here. We could just add to like that. Um, and now the bottom region. So the bottom region, we're setting up some style again, and we're making shapes. So we've um, actually styled the A, B, C, D, D parameters. That's the, the bounds for the shape so that they, all these icons that we're making would be center aligned. These icons we made in Adobe Animate, and you can export to get this. Uh, that's the icon code there. Or you can take a look, if you're interested in that, you can take a look at uh, the Zim Pizzazz series. So number three, Pizzazz 303, is a bunch of icons. Well, these were custom icons. We thought about adding them to Pizzazz, but I don't know, are you going to use these icons Often, maybe, maybe not. It's, it's hard to say, but instead of adding to pizzazz, we just brought them in here. And then based on that, we're tiling those icons. So we have those tile icons are tiled. The series is tiled there. And then we take that tile and we're adding it to the uh, selector. And that builds a selector at the bottom. When we change, we're applying a tip based on the selector name. And this is what we're actually doing to the wrapper. So when it changes, we're resetting the wrapper each time. So this is resetting some of the properties of it. And then as we switch through, we're setting the wrapper type to spacing, spread, stretch, column. So those are the main uh, wrapper types. And then we're applying flip, reverse, bottom, full, percent, void, and percent, uh, void, V, or H and V. There. So those are the features that we're uh, changing there. So those, all right, sorry, this might be a bit small for you. Um, we actually no longer need to lay out resize because all of these things are setting properties that will change it. So we can get rid of, that would just be an extra resize on that. And we probably don't need a stage.update, but we'll keep it in there just for sure. And then that's the tip. Finally, we get to the layout. So this is the Zim layout class where we're saying, hey, please lay out the, uh, oh, the, where are we laying this out on? We're laying it out on the stage as opposed to some other, other object. Um, what are the regions? The regions are the top, the window, 
and the bottom selector there. So we put everything in the top in a top container. This is the window that holds our, our wrapper. Um, we should put that directly into the layout class because then the layout class knows it's working on a window and it will resize the window to the size of its region. That's new in 10.8.0. So it's pretty cool. Um, and same with the window. You want to put the selector into the window and then the window knows to resize the selector. Uh, I'm not sure. I think, yeah, we did it too where the layout class, you can put a selector directly into the layout class, actually. Maybe we could have just done that. Uh, I'm not sure if we decided on that or if we thought it'd go in a window. The other cool thing is the window it has a resize. So new in Zim 10.8.0 is window with the resize. So let's go take a look at that. Anyway, frame is resizing and when it resizes, it resizes the layout. It also just hides the tip so the tip doesn't get left behind as, as, the, as the window is resizing. Okay, not bad, huh? I mean, there's a lot there indeed, but it's all pretty tidy. It's all pretty integrated. Uh, let's just show, and that was a bit like an explorer, wasn't it? We're just supposed to be doing a bubbling here and, and less of an explorer. So why don't we quickly drop back out to the, um, out to here, and we are going to take a look at the docs on Zim. So back at the docs here, and we'll open that up, and then we'll look for the docs for uh, wrapper, wrapper, enter. So here it is. If you scroll on down, it talks about the different alignments. I mean, all in all, I think it, it's much like the Flexbox, what we're doing here, which is was much like Adobe Flex, uh, came from Flash, and we're doing stuff like we used to do in Flash too. But um, I think what we're doing here hopefully is more clear. I know that it, the Flexbox has confused many people in the HTML and the CSS world to the point where they, you know, they have e-learning games to learn the Flexbox. I mean, if you have to learn a component, it's kind of like, uh, it's a little bit much. We've got alignment. <laughs> We've got alignment for the insides of the, the, you know, by the items. We've got alignment for the, the main rows. And uh, great. So that's left, center, right, left, center, right, um, uh, top, middle, bottom, or top, center and middle, by the way, either one works. Center and middle, doesn't matter. Um, and then we've got four or five different types that I think do something pretty obvious. And uh, then we've got these other sort of settings like flip, reverse, bottom, full, and that kind of stuff. But they all seem so easy compared to looking at the flex box and trying to figure out what to do. So hopefully you like them. Also the margins. Zim has, now has margins on any objects. So you're welcome to any object that is being put into a wrapper. Uh, if you give it margins left, it will shift it from the left over, and it doesn't affect the other things in the flex box. For that, you can do various um, spacing tricks. Hey, go away. Uh, right, okay, wrapper window layouts, wrappers versus tiles. Tiles don't wrap, basically, but they also have lots of uh, responsive settings, the tile does. And labels do wrap, so you can wrap, if you just want to wrap text, just wrap text, it's no problem. Um, what I want to do is, like I said, drop out, just uh, take some easy, easy view of the wrapper here. Let's copy that. We'll go back to our browser. Oh, we're in our browser. And I'll pop into Zim here. Doop. Down into Zoo. We'll just take a look in, inside of Zoo. So paste here. This is the code now that we're doing in Zoo. We're, create, we're adding a bunch of circles to an array. These circles are orange, green, and blue randomly. We're then adding those circles to the wrapper uh, with uh, certain settings here. What would that be? The width that we're going to wrap to start off with at 400 and then 20, 20 in the spacing. And then based on an interval, we're going to be resizing the wrapper at a random width between 300 and 500. We're also outlining as we go and updating the stage. So let's have a look. Oh, darn. <laughs> oh, um, oh, darn. Let's try this again. Uh, I think the background color is green, so why don't we choose a different color here? How about a pink? Like that. And try that again. There we go. There we go. Okay, so as you can see, the wrapper is resizing and it wraps our random circles around uh, at, the various, um, at the various width settings.
Okay, so that's the idea. Now let's try putting that in a uh, in a window. So we'll go back and look at the code of the docs, and this one has an example with a window. So we copy this one. Copy. We'll come on back to the zoo here, and we'll paste in the zoo and have a view. Now what we're doing is we're putting, well, should we look at them? Uh, we're basically making a bunch of circles, rectangles, and triangles. We could have done that perhaps more efficiently. We're adding them to the wrapper, applying spacing. We've got a wrapper type of spread. And the difference is that we've added this wrapper to the window. The window we have a resize handle set to true as well as full size set to true. And uh, we're, we've got a title bar as well that will allow us to to drag this if we want. So now we can drag this. Here's the resize handle, new to Zim 10.8, where we're now resizing the window and we're keeping that uh, spread setting there. We've also got full size, which therefore, uh, you know, full sizes it, and here's the, the one to bring it back down again, much like Windows. So that's the Zim window with a wrapper put in it. Very cool, huh? All right, well, this has been a What's a Bubbling with Zim. I am Dr. Abstract. Come on in to zimjs.com. And if you're listening to this, you should join us on Slack. That was a Slack message we just had popping up. So I'm going to go in and answer that at the moment. Zimjs.com slash Slack. And uh, check out uh, Zim. Ciao.